By the time this video releases, it'll only be a few days after my birthday. Which means that, for once, I can ramble like a madman about a video game I'm passionate about, because that is and definitely what this whole channel is built on. Okay, maybe this isn't such a special video after all. Anyways, superhero games are a genre of games that have a weird history. For decades, they've been the punching bag in the industry. Weirdly put together excuses of games that were made for the sole purpose of selling a movie or toys. But one day, to the surprise of everyone, they started to become kind of good. Eventually outgrowing the reputation of cheap, soulless products in the mid-2000s and getting a new reputation of really good adaptations of source material in the mid-2010s, with this only growing stronger in the 2020s. Now that that's been said, I have to ask. When most people say the best superhero game of all time, what do you normally think of? For most people, it boils down to one of two choices. Insomniac Spider-Man, or Batman Arkham City, or Night, or Origins, or Asylum. Well, Insomniac Spider-Man and an Arkham game of your choice. But basically, these are the best games for that superhero rich, standing tall among a sea of weird, cheap licensed games, Lego superhero games like Lego Batman, Lego Avengers, those Spider-Man games from the 2000s that were kinda good, but also like, they age really weirdly. That one Hulk game, and the non-LEGO Avengers game. But we're not here to talk about the hit or miss nature of this game genre, at least not today. We're here to celebrate what I think is the single greatest hit it's had up until now. So why don't we dive in and discover everything that makes Arkham City, well, Arkham City. The game that not only got the Game of the Year award, but also the game that was, and still is considered, the best superhero game of all time. Even if Insomniac Spider-Man has already usurped that throne in the eyes of some. Well, let's start. I feel like I don't really need to say this, but I will anyway, just to get it out of the way. Batman Arkham City is an action-adventure video game from 2011 that's set in the Batman Arkham universe, based on the Batman character. It's a sequel to the contemporary classic that is Batman Arkham Asylum, and at first glance we can already tell in those two years between Asylum and City's releases, they've been working hard to make sure this is the best game they could make. The confined corners of the asylum and the oppressive character of Arkham Island that was present in the first game have been switched out in favor of the big, sprawling city prison of, well, Arkham City. You think? What the hell can they do next? Arkham County? Arkham Country? Big ass Arkham World? <laughs> yes, the prison they built in this district of Gotham City after closing down Arkham Asylum is called Arkham City. How original. But that's besides the point. Like I was saying, in those two years between Asylum and City, they've really been working hard to one-up the last game and make this a much more complete experience. The key word here is more. More refined gameplay, for example. The rough yet pretty consistent gameplay of Asylum has been polished up in City. Not only is the combat way more smoother and less mechanical, and also boasting way more options to respond with than just attack or counter, just like with the now less clunky gadget attacks, the beatdown combo for tougher enemies, and the multi takedowns which are hilariously OP. But the larger map of the city prison also allows for better and more refined mobility. In the asylum, things were pretty close together the medical center was only a stroll away from the botanical gardens or the Arkham Mansion.
but here the different points of interest are more spread out. So it's only natural that the glide would become faster and that you could do some trials to unlock a grappling hood upgrade that boosts you and just launches you into the air. In general, the traversal has been greatly increased from the almost claustrophobic, awkward movements on the asylum to this almost graceful, confident demeanor. The story in this game picks up a few months after the events in Asylum, and it deals with the shady city prison, conspiracy, and the aftermath of everything that happened in the Asylum. Mixed in with the average Batman shenanigans, of course. Which leads me to my next point. This game is also more expansive, in the sense that there are more characters, both playable and unplayable. You even get some rare, non-mainstream Batman characters in this, like the Calendar Man, Azrael, who is your personal Yandere stalker, Baga! and this rich asshole no one knows called Bruce Wayne. Hell, you even played the entire intro as him. Oh, okay, he's he's Batman. A character that was strangely absent from the asylum also pops up in this game. Alfred, who, in tandem with Oracle, assists Batman by helping him out with whatever he needs. And in addition to all of that, this game also has side quests, where you duke it out against some lesser villains. Now, when it comes to playable characters apart from Batman, you've actually got a couple to choose from. Nightwing, Catwoman, and Robin. The only downside is that Robin is exclusive to his DLC. With Catwoman, you're also stuck with her missions and some post-game free roam for the Catwoman-specific Riddler trophies. But she's also just the only one in the Bat family that has upgrades. And Nightwing is relegated to just challenge mode. Poor Nightwing. And I also have to point out that these characters are not Batman reskins. They move, fight, and have different attacks. Hell, even Catwoman has her own type of traversal, because, you know, she doesn't use the grappling hook. The Riddler is also in this game, this time making us collect 440 trophies. And as someone who has gone ahead and collected all of them, it's not worth it. Seriously, don't even think about it, it's futile. It's a shame it has a semi-fun side quest tied to it, where you have to rescue some essential workers from like Saw-esque traps every time you connect like 150 trophies or something like that. The Joker is also here, still being the deranged, madman, society-hating, gamer, stupid, anarchy-loving psychopath that he is. To put his madness into perspective, to him, an extremely goofy movie is just a movie. Come on, hit me. Spur, spur, spur. Hit me. Hit me. And Batman is still the same as always, a psychotic bat-like man who has decided that therapy, therapy wasn't the right option. The right option is and has always been beating up the poor and hopeless to the point of hospitalization. <laughs> wow, it's Batman. Ah, beating me to death. That's fucking crazy. Every night, while dressed in tight, tight leotards. Fine invention. Ah! Oh, before I forget and while we're on topic, I shall also add that the challenge maps have been expanded upon. In Asylum, they were a couple of maps, some combat challenges, some predator challenges that both had a normal and an extreme version. In City, to the surprise of literally no one who has watched the last seven minutes of the video, uh, they expanded upon this mechanic. Now we got straight up three map campaigns which consist of a melee brawl, stealth, and another brawl. We've got challenge modifiers and gimmick challenges like the Endless Maps, Iceberg Lounge, and the Joker's Funhouse. Oh yeah, this time they also had boss fights in mind from the get-go, which means that they're a complete upgrade from the last game. There are beatdown bosses, gimmick slash puzzle bosses, 
In fact, I believe some of the bosses in this game are some of the best in the entire series. Actually, yeah, they're that good. But this game isn't a perfect 10 out of 10. As much as I think it's one of the best superhero games. The game is a bit of a wild goose chase from one corner of the map to the other a few times. Down underground and high up in the sky. But despite that, this game is still awesome and it still feels like an actual comic book. Because nothing makes you feel like Batman than beating the absolute fuck out of a shark. Arkham City did something shocking. Something unbelievable. Something no human on this planet has ever dared to do. Something that will forever be written in history books as a document of important achievements. Something that has no name, but translators have managed to deconstruct to the limited alphabet as becoming the best Batman game, and by extension the best superhero game, in my opinion. It easily has the best story in the Arkham series, even though, you know, the Knight fans and the Origin fans will like to discuss that, but, you know, that's, that's a different thing. Uh, the game is detailed, it's fun, it's just like a comic book, and it's full of plot twists. No gun harm? Shame. This is gonna hurt. Two guns, bitch! It's no surprise that this game is so well recorded. 12 years later and it has aged like wine. Not fine wine, just wine. Also... 12 years already? Jesus Christ, I'm a cadaver. And you might ask, does it get better? Can we get much higher? Because we're already so high. Well, once you're at the pinnacle, you have to fall down to the pit. Because yes indeed, next time we'll be talking about the third game in the series. The jolliest Batman game of all time. It's midnight, sir. Huh? I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. You too. I've been Roth, uh, thank you for watching. Two, three, four, one, two, three, mother.